Yo, it's your boy Young Moly, now check this shit out man. None other than the president of the ESL aka European Super League, Florentino Perez and he's also the president of Real Madrid, yesterday night gave a lengthy interview about his views and the reason behind the formation of the Super League. Now guys, I'ma get straight into the shit man. I'ma be as objective as possible, you know what I'm saying? And I'ma finna start with the shit that made sense, cause I believe the president had a lot of shit to spit in the booth. He has some facts, he has some cap, and he has some straight up bullshit as well man. We finna start with the facts, you know what I'm saying? Now, the things that he said that I found sensible is regarding UEFA. He made statements about the lack of transparency in UEFA, and he openly asked why aren't UEFA and the La Liga salaries public. He also mentioned why those salaries haven't been reduced like everyone else during the pandemic. And he also said, how come we don't know the salary of the UEFA president while we know the salary of LeBron James? Now, it's true that UEFA and FIFA have done a lot of shady things in the last few years, and that's very documented, you know what I'm saying? There's no doubt about that. There's a lot of corruption with these organizations. And furthermore, even we saw the workers in Qatar World Cup, when the bodies were dropping to be accurate, more than 6,000 people have died so far. The UEFA and the FIFA didn't bat an eye because the pockets were full by the oil money. So the homie has some valid points out here, you know what I'm saying? Because the UEFA, they're not as innocent as they claim to be. There's a lot of corruption and a lot of fuckery with the UEFA, you know what I'm saying? But now, when he was asked about his motivation to create this uh, Super League, that's where the cap starts. He said the reason for formation of the Super League is to save football and that the big teams have lost a lot of money. First of all, all the teams in the world have been affected by this pandemic. Even Sheffield United have lost some money. So let's get that clear. And during this question, he repeatedly kept saying to save football. You know what I'm saying? And let's keep it Hannah, man. When he's trying to save football, he's trying to save Real Madrid right here. You know what I'm saying? Who are 900 millions in debt? Now, whose fault is that? In the middle of a pandemic, Real Madrid are building and renovating a stadium. Real Madrid over the years have made questionable acquisitions in the transfer market. To give you an easy and basic example, even though they were in debt, they still shelled 100 millions on Hazard on a player who was 28 years old and who had very little resale value. Real Madrid over the years have spent a lot of money on the Galatico players and in order to get any player, they often pay over the old salaries and transfer fees. And they sell prized assets for little money like we saw they did with James Rodriguez uh, last summer, they even did it with Schneider, Van der Vaart, Robin, like the list goes on and on. He kept repeating how the Super League will generate more money. While that's true, it will only generate money though for the few teams who are permanently members in the Super League. And some members there do not even justify their inclusion because they have been shit and y'all know who I'm talking about man. Basically this homie want to punish all the other teams in Europe for the financial mistakes the big teams made in the last few years, like the Barcelona's, Real Madrid and AC Milan's. Because to start with, it's the owner's mistakes that these teams are in debt. Bruh, this homie must be high on glue or something man. And to continue with the cups, the biggest cap he said is that when the Super League teams get all the money, the money fina trickle down the pyramid and it will be redistributed to all the teams below. Bitch please man, this motherfucker thinks we were actually born yesterday man. Barcelona and Real Madrid have the major TV rights in Spain and thus earning by far more than the other teams in Spain. We have never seen these guys redistribute none of that dough, man. To further even insult the intelligence of others, he continued by saying that Super League is an open competition because there will be 5 spots available for the rest of the teams in Europe, while the 15 teams will be permanent. It's like saying the Ballon d'Or nomination will be open, but you have 4 permanent nominees who are always gonna be there and one available spot for the rest of the players, man. The audacity, man. The audacity. This motherfucker thinks we're stupid, man. He said, and I quote, by the way, the 15 founding clubs are the ones that matter the most in terms of entertainment. Others like Napoli, Roma will have a chance to be in the competition once a year or another. But let's see. Bruh, I won't even bother to comment on this shit, man. Anyways, another copy three as well is the fact that Bayern Munich and PSG were not invited to join, while the evidence suggests to the contrary. In 2018, if y'all remember, an email leaked by the WikiLeaks showed an email actually inviting PSG and Bayern Munich. Bruh, this just reminds me of the homies who ask a girl out, and when they get rejected, they comfort themselves by saying, Bruh, she ugly and she lesbian, bruh. Now, during a certain moment, these homies start saying the younger generation are losing interest for football, that the game should be shorter, and that when the referees make the decisions, they will speak loud into the public with a microphone. Something in the NFL style, you know what I'm saying? We might as well start saying, uh, soccer, man. Scrap that football thing, man. The fuck? This is the type of bullshit this homie was preaching yesterday, man. And when the interview was conducted, I really had better expectations. I thought he would slap us with some solid points, but you know what I'm saying? The only thing he reaffirmed is the fact that the Super League teams are just looking to get more money while killing the rest of Europe, and they want to get rewarded regardless of their performance, you know what I'm saying? No matter how you're looking at this, man, this is killing football and not saving football, and all the teams that have gone into the Super League, either they haven't had the success they are used to in the last part of the decade, 
either than in a big debt from their own wrongdoings, or they simply have greedy owners who want to monopolize the competition. Or simply maybe they're just stolen them, you know what I'm saying? Lastly, Perez said, the UEFA has created a monopoly. And if y'all think about it, man, that's what Super League's actually exactly doing, man. There's not so much difference between those two. But the only major difference I feel between the Super League and UEFA is like, in the Super League, it's actually a closed shop. In the sense that the permanent 15 funding teams, they cannot be relegated. And there are just five spots for the rest of Europe, you know what I'm saying? While UEFA is more open for everybody. Now, to make things even worse, it was announced in the middle of a pandemic before the season even finished, man. Now, somehow, personally, I'm not even gassed to watch the games remaining of the season because low-key, they do feel meaningless at this point in time. But anyways, man, time will tell how this shit finna go. But I gotta say, I expected way more from the interview. But it is what it is, man. Y'all can check it out. It's all over Twitter and I have retweeted it on the Young Muli Twitter page as well. So y'all can see it for your own eyes. Anyways, man, watch y'all make up for Perez and his goons' opinion regarding this matter. Let me know in the comment box. It's your boy Young Muli. Like and subscribe. It's lit.